So this is going to be a, a quick little discussion on some of the kinetics of uh, filming ballroom dancing and sort of the difficulties of how translating motion into another medium. It's been some of the things that I've learned uh, about doing it. I should preface this by saying that I'm not a ballroom dancer at all, but I had friends uh, all throughout high school who were very into ballroom dancing, and by very into it, I mean they were you know, on competition formation teams would go to nationals uh, and compete and get walls of trophies. So I would go with them to nationals and see them perform. It was always interesting to hear them talk about how the, they felt that the videos made of them didn't really reflect what they were doing on the floor and how uh, when it was filmed it became very flat and lost all of its dynamics. But I was interested to see what else could be done with it and what opportunities could be found. I guess it all started because the company that my friends are dancing for, Extreme Ballroom Company, is being filmed by a company who's making a single camera production of the year in concert. And uh, it was kind of with all the limitations of a single camera production, long lens at the back of the house and zoom in in the middle of a shot to get a close up and zoom out to see the rest of the action all in one take. I remember sitting in the Civic Auditorium uh, year after year and sort of watching these year in concerts because all my friends would go and were in the concert. Watching the DVD later was always a disappointment because you didn't see the fun they were having. I went to the Extreme Ballroom coach and I asked if I could take over the production of this year in DVD and uh, she said okay. The theme they were doing that year was Michael Jackson. He had just died and This Is It was coming out and they wanted to do a tribute. And it was really interesting watching This Is It and uh, looking up some of Michael Jackson's music videos. I mean, it was sort of a school for me because he's always had a very strong sense of kinetics and how to interpret that really well into the medium of film. Producing the show ended up being more work than I expected. I had to start a company to be able to produce the product. We did some photo shoots for promotional posters and ultimately had to figure out how to sell the DVDs back to people, mostly the parents and families. And of course, all they're looking for is to see their kid. But I was interested in capturing a different aspect to the show. There's a lot of energy in like, you know, the performing arenas when these guys are performing at nationals or at their concerts. I mean, there's people screaming their lungs out, you know? <laughs> to be able to translate that into a cinematic experience, I felt was really important because that's a direct reflection of how they're performing, what energy these people are putting into their um, dance performances and ultimately what fun it is. <laughs> It's designed to be seen from up high so that you can see the formations as people sort of you know, move in and out of these different arrangements. And that's part of the beauty and part of the style of it. And so by filming it from you know, the proscenium level, then you never see that. And so that was one of the first things that I wanted to fix and sort of the first studies that I did was, okay, what if we put the camera, the wide shot inside of the balcony so that you could actually see the formations. So this is stuff I did now. I think it works better to have the camera in the balcony. You can see the formations and it gives a sense of scale to the whole thing. I come from a background of multi-camera production, mostly in live events. And uh, that kind of school teaches you to be pretty aggressive and you know, getting close-ups and being able to use multiple cameras with assignments to be able to cover your action. So you have a camera doing the wide shot and then you have a couple you know, cameras doing medium and everyone's sort of looking at it from a different angle and this gives you multiple options. So when we're cutting this together, you know, I had the equivalent of basically nine cameras uh, working and so that I could select these different points of view and that assembly of all those different combinations is where you can really start playing with the kinetics because in the cuts you start seeing the movement and you can um, what I call punch or accentuate a certain moment. When 
I'm cutting is always minding the frame, always minding where to cut. You know, how do you accentuate that moment? How do you punch it? How do you make it more exciting? How do you sharpen up their performance? For example, when you're cutting together uh, something and somebody does a spin, to cut on the spin, it makes it look smoother than if you cut before or after they spin. Um, and so in that particular aspect, the timing of the editing is just as important as the timing of the performance. David Lean called it love cutting, uh, which I think is a pretty good way of saying it, where you try and take out the clumsy bits, you cut around it, cut to a reaction shot or another performer so that you're only getting the best of the best. It kind of contrasts with the kind of classical sense of filming dance, like in the Fred Astaire movies, where you're head to toe and you sort of, uh, you know, film the whole action. But I think there's something to be gained by, uh, you know, using static and moving cameras. I recorded this concert for two years in a row, and it's basically a two-hour show each time, so, um, for those of you who are familiar with editing and how long that takes, I mean, there's a lot of hours that go into this. When I was first starting to make movies, a lot of it was uh, predominantly handheld camera work, uh, mostly because the tripod was such a pain. But a lot of my friends who had helped me during that time uh, were ballroom dancers, and so they always made the best camera operators because they were so graceful. And so I was always fascinated by their sense of movement. So it's kind of always been baked into what I was doing. And then that sort of led to me being a dolly grip and me being a jib operator uh, professionally. Seeing a dance through a camera is a different sort of experience entirely than sort of viewing it from a fixed seat because with the camera and with the cutting I can put you on stage and sort of show you the energy and the faces and the expressions and that's one of the great things about being able to use multi-camera production for this kind of thing. is you literally can get so close you can see the dancer's performance and read their passion a lot more. It also equals a very difficult balancing act because you have to be wide to see the formations when they hit formations or when they change formations. And so it becomes a balancing act because you're wide and then you punch in to get a face or an expression or some detail and then you come out again for the wide shot. And if you don't do this right, then the dancers think that you missed it. And you might really like the cut that you've got, but you know, when you show it to somebody who's you know, there or on the team or knows formation dancing, they're like, all right, you didn't see it, man, you missed it. And so uh, that was part of an education for me is sort of knowing when I could be wide, when I can um, you know, afford to, I guess, punch into a close up and see that because you want to uh, sell the complete experience. <laughs> A lot of this work that uh, I put into these shows was an effort to really show the passion uh, that these kids put in because I wanted the video to reflect uh, what the dancers were doing. So at the end of the second year of producing the show, I put on the back of the DVD my philosophy of sort of why I was doing it. And it seems a little bit big-headed, I suppose, but it was the closest thing that I could really come up to, to basically saying, uh, what I believe, and that is that I really love seeing people perform um, and love what they do and do it well. And you can tell that they do it well because they've put the time into it to really finesse the process and make it look really great. I wanted to kind of honor what they were doing, the dedication, the hard work, and uh, basically give them a salute because I think they are fantastic.